Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hi everyone, how are you doing? And a very warm welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, at time of recording, which is the 6th of May 2024, uh, Risk OS, do you remember that? It used to be a basically a staple of what we used to do here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Well, Risk OS is in the operating system, formerly from uh, Acorn Computers, so it has a, a British background. Uh, the operating system has had an upgrade, so Risk OS 5 is now at version 5.30. Now, just to give you a little bit of history about uh, RiskOS and this channel, if you've been following me for a little while, you'll already know about this, but RiskOS used to be my kind of go-to operating system for the Raspberry Pi. And in the early days, especially way back in 2011, 2012, it was fantastic. It ran fast, it ran efficiently, it did things that the at the time the Raspberry and Linux couldn't do purely because the original Raspberry hardware was so slow. However, roll on over 10 years now and things have changed quite dramatically. We're now on Raspberry Pi 5 and the Raspberry Pi OS, Linux Debian as it is now, runs really, really well, really fast, is usable as a desktop environment. And of course, it does all those kind of PC desktop type things that you'd expect. RiskOS, on the other hand, hasn't, and it was always slightly behind the curve, and it's just gotten further and further away over time. Um, that, coupled with a few sort of internal political issues, mainly with the community, just led me to the conclusion that it wasn't worth my time carrying on with it, and it wasn't worth yours. So I just decided that, that was it. We're moving on. Anyway, I roll forward to today and today's video. So the end of April 2024, RiskOS got an update, version 5.30, and the big news was it now finally supported Wi-Fi. Now, we had the first Wi-Fi Raspberry Pi, as in the Raspberry Pi 3, around 2016. Obviously, Raspbian, the Linux build, jumped on that almost immediately. You'd expect it. And yeah, you could give RiskOS, you know, maybe a year or two years to kind of catch up. It just never did. So we're, what, eight years later, and we finally have some kind of native Wi-Fi support. Don't get me wrong, it is welcome, but it just feels like closing the stable door long, long after the horse has bolted. Now, my hardware of choice today to try this on is the Raspberry Pi 400. Now, I've realised recently that the 400s were actually split into two model types. There was the sort of before pandemic or during pandemic ones, and there was the post pandemic production, where because of the chip shortage, some of the components, mainly things like networking and Ethernet, changed. Some users of RiskOS have noted that, although it does say it supports Raspberry Pi 400, and this is an early first generation model, I have it under good authority that there may be compatibility problems with the later Raspberry Pi 400s. Don't quote me on that, but it has come up as an issue. Now, as it's the Raspberry Pi platform, we do need some sort of micro SD type card. I've got this eight gig card. RiskOS can only format itself into a two gig partition and you can't expand it. So you are stuck with two gigabytes regardless of the size of card you put in. Again, another major flaw. But let's pop that in. So I've got this connected to my PC and the first thing we'll need to do is to download and flash to micro SD card. So if I can draw your attention to RiskOS Open, that's riskosopen.org. This is the official build basically for all current RiskOS platforms. Uh, we click Downloads and you'll see it supports a number of platforms, including legacy Acorn hardware. We're going to click Raspberry Pi and we'll click to download. Don't be tempted by the nightly beta ROM. I know it's a newer version, but things generally aren't fixed in that and it will actually break. So just download the pre-compiled SD card image. Okay, so here in my downloads, I have the zip file, and let's just see if we can extract that. Uh, we'll extract all. It's not a particularly big file, I said it only at two gigs, so it won't take too long to uh, uncompress. It's important you do this step because the amount of people that have just tried to click and drag onto SD cards and wonder why it doesn't work. 
Okay, there we go. And this should be the disk image file here. And there is a readme included. So this is the image we need. Now we need to open Bellina Etcher, which you can download for free. And we need to click flash from file. And let's just go and find that, which is downloads. We'll open that image. Make sure we select what it is we're actually trying to flash to. So mine's an 8 gig card on D, which is correct. And we'll click flash. Windows may want some permissions, so we'll say yes, that's fine. Go ahead. And we'll give that a moment to flash and we'll come back. Right, so let's take the micro SD card out from the PC and let's put that into our SPI 400. Let's power up and hopefully you'll see what I see on the capture card. So far looking good. So this is the normal boot screen that we would see. So if you get to this far, then a good chance it's going to work fine. Now it will normally hang here if you don't have an internet connection connected. So for this, we're just gonna hit the escape key, escape through and we'll click cancel. And that will take us to a fresh Risk Rest Pi desktop. So it's opened up here NetSurf, which is the default web browser, which is okay, but not, I mean, you're not going to watch YouTube videos with it, put it that way, but it's it's all right. It's a fast, simple HTML4 era browser that kind of works. They are a few others for RiskOS with kind of varying degrees of success, but NetSurf that comes here as standard generally tends to be the most robust and reliable uh, of the sort of current crop of web browsers for the RiskOS ecosystem. So we click the SD card and we'll bring up the, if you like, the equivalent of a C drive, if you like. And I'm just conscious as to where this new Wi-Fi module is or how do we how do we connect? That would be interesting to know. Um, let's try middle clicking. By the way, left and right click aren't standardized on risk so it's middle click as opposed to a right click. So let's just go configure. And network. And Ah, there we are. So we go network interfaces and it's actually found a, uh, a Wi-Fi, which is interesting. So we now go configure uh, boot by DCHP set status. Okay. Let's do a save. Let's just restart. Again, I've not actually seen how you actually set this up. And like most things in risk rest, there's very little, if any, documentation of how it actually works. They just assume you know how it works, which is another bugbearer with this whole thing. So you see here it says connecting my Wi-Fi interface, which is fine, but it ain't going to do it because we haven't put a password or username in. I haven't told it which Wi-Fi to actually connect to. So we'll just we'll let that run for a minute and see what it does. Ah, there we go. So we now a little Wi-Fi dongle. Ah, right. So if we middle click, that's my connection there. Connection, name, password. Okay. So it's not turned on by default, basically. Now I have to go and grab my password. <laughs> so I'll put that in and then we'll see if we can actually connect. Right, so password, fine. Uh, let's select reconnect. Never image. I like the fact it doesn't actually just type the password in uh, as in letters, it does actually try and hide it. So at least that's something. But there we go. Right, let's see if this actually works. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Well, oh, are we connected? Okay, I think. Right, um, let's just see if we are. I don't know why I've got two, but I've got two, so. That's uh, WPA2, and what was that one? The slower, the slower the two connections, so... Is that one faster, is it? Yeah, clearly. Uh, okay, well, we've connected. So... We now go back to NetSurf. 
that serve doesn't seem mad, madly happy. Uh, NetSurf website? No. And it keeps timing out, which is interesting. So, so I can't. Hmm. Okay. So something seems a bit buggy. Let's let's restart. Let's try that again. So I think we can clearly see anyone hoping that this was going to work out of the box. Um, yeah, no, basically. Let me just uh, let's go back to configure network internet interfaces. Let's turn that off. Hmm, interesting. Uh, we start later. Nope, it's not seeing it. It's not seeing a connect. Right, I must. I, I'm beginning to think I've connected into the wrong thing. That's my neighbour. We're not connecting into theirs. Um, right, let me go and grab that password again. And let's try connecting. See if that connects. Let's just do another restart. So, do you know what? I was generally getting excited about this, but uh, yeah, I mean, technically there's something there that sort of potentially works, but it's not much fun if you can't actually connect to anything, if it seems really buggy and you can't actually use it for even browsing simple web pages. It's not a simple, straightforward connection that I would have hoped for. So, yeah, that's a little disappointing. But uh, let's just give it one last shot and let's see how well that works. So one thing to note immediately is that obviously if you have the Wi-Fi set up and running, it's going to... I'm trying to think, is there some other setting I've not set up properly? Right. I really wish you could just click that in all honesty. Okay. So let's try that once more. Reconnect, connect. No. Um, well, all in all, I have to say that's a bit disappointing, really. Um, I was hoping for something a little bit better than that. Um, I'm just trying to think, is there anything I haven't set this up? Anything I've forgotten to do? No, it's not happy. Gateway unset. Shouldn't have to do that because um, we should be going via um, DHCP. I mean, I don't think that will make just a difference, but we can give it a shot. No, won't do it. So it won't connect to it and it won't disconnect from it. Well, in all I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed about that, actually. Um, I was hoping that was going to be a little bit more intuitive and simpler than it was. I'm open to suggestions. If I've missed something really, really obvious, then obviously do let me know rather than screaming at your computer uh, or whichever device you happen to be watching me on. Uh, we will revisit this if new information comes to light or some way of doing this works. It could be that I could try running this on another type of Raspberry Pi. Perhaps it is an issue with Raspberry Pi 400. As I said in the intro, the 400 went for a hardware revision midway through, so I don't know what version was actually used when they tested this. I'm assuming it has been tested prior to being released. So, yeah, um, again, it, it's just it's a shame, really, but it's not worth my time messing around with. You know, we've got other things we could be doing. If you have better success, then obviously do let me know. 
Right, well that's just about it for this video. So if you haven't done so already, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you real soon, right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Bye.